Hello, 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 sewing peeps and sewing enthusiasts. Welcome to the 56th episode of That Sewing Black. We want to thank you for taking the time to stop in and watch the show tonight. We really appreciate it. And we also hope each and every one of you had a wonderful day. So my name is Myra of Simple Inspiration. And my co-host here is Dawn of Dueling Design. But what we want to, what we, what we want you to do right now is we want you to grab some popcorn, some potato chips, some wine, beer, water, soda, whatever your pleasure, so that you can enjoy this show. And without further ado, what I'm going to do is pass it over to Dawn right now so that she can introduce our guest for tonight. Dawn? Well, we are very, very lucky to have Helen here um, from Stitch My Style. Um, I, I like the first time I saw one of your videos, Helen, I was just transfixed. Uh, like there's some people that do videos and they seem kind of stunted, but you, I could feel your personality coming through the screen. Oh. And it, it was like, oh, this is a girl I'd love to have a cup of tea with and hang out, you know, while knitting, sewing, oh, doing something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I loved, loved your videos and um, I'm, really liking some of the stuff you have coming up too, but you also have a very, very lovely blog. And uh, when we discuss it later, I can throw some pictures up. Um, yeah, and we're just thrilled that you could join us, even though it is like 12.30 at night there. It is, it is late in London. It is late. Thank you so much for having me. It's lovely to be here. Sorry if I'm slightly bleary eyed or spoken. I'm usually in bed, like, you know, this is, I'm turning into a pumpkin is what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> A very pretty pumpkin, indeed. <laughs> well, so I imagine everyone would love, love, love to know, um, you know, how you started sewing. Yeah, um, how I started sewing. Um, I've been sewing most of my life. My mum was a very queen. Uh, queen? It started already. Keen quilting. <laughs> um, and she was um, quilting when I was tiny. Uh, and she got me in front of the sewing machine, I think I was about six. So it's been in my life for a very long time. But I, I, I learned to quilt and make that sort of thing to start with. And then I, um, as we do, I got a bit older and I stopped sewing and kind of started doing other stuff during my late teenage years. And then at university, I kind of, yeah, again, was too busy or drunk or something. I don't know, I wasn't, but I wasn't concentrating on my sewing. And then I kind of rediscovered it when I was in my late twenties. I took a year um, out from work or two months, and uh, I I went travelling. And during that period, I met up with a very dear friend of mine who had taken up quilting, and she reminded me how much I loved it. And we made quilts together in Singapore. That was kind of great. Um, and then I was in China for a little while, and I got slightly tired or uh, and bored for various reasons. I can talk about that in more detail, but. Um, my mum told me I needed to come up with another project because I wasn't busy enough. And so I, I made a, a quilt while I was out there. But when I came back, I, I thought, oh, I should try dressmaking. Because when I was dressmaking before, it was in the 90s, and the pattern were a little um, frumpy. And uh, they weren't that inspiring. <laughs> um, and then I got back and I found this amazing online community and a load of independent designers who had just popped up in the meantime that I didn't even know existed. And I suddenly found all these things that I really wanted to wear. And it transformed the way that I interacted with sewing and I started dressmaking. So that was probably four, year, four years ago? 2013, yeah, four years ago. And I got hooked. And I've basically been making clothes every possible second I can since then. That's the long answer to your question. <laughs> yeah. Well, very fascinating about you traveling. You can see in the comments that yeah, Andrea is like says she needs to get out of her studio. She <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do sometimes. We kind of get stuck. We kind of get stuck in there and um, we want to get out and meet people, you know. Um, now we have a bunch of questions that we like to get to, our basic questions, what we would call them, Helen but um, that I'm sure our view viewers will want to ask some questions too. But before we get into some more of these questions, I just wanted to ask you if you would like to talk about that Maryland dress. 
because <laughs> I went on and I watched those videos and I was like, okay, when she comes on here, we'll ask her the basic questions we normally do, but we want her to talk about that dress. What inspired her to do it? How she went about it and some of the processes, you know, all of that stuff. It was just fabulous. So I'm just going to ask you another um, question here from our basics. Um, and I think you may have answered some of that about being um, trained or self-taught, how you started off. But have you had any professional? Um, no, not really. I've, um, I'm mostly self and YouTube taught. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, I have taken a few crafty courses, which have been brilliant, and I've loved, um, those have been really good. <clears throat> um, but other than that, not really. I've never really done, have I ever done any official classes in sewing? No, I don't think so. I don't think I have. One or two, maybe, um, on specific garments. So there's, there's a, um, anyone who watches sewing stuff on YouTube may well have seen the um, Sew Over Its channel. Um, mm -hmm. who's based in London. I've been to one of her courses before to, to do, um, she does a <clears throat> model where you make the patterns that she develops. Um, so I've done that, but that was a little bit more specific. So no, mostly self-taught, vast majority, yeah. Wow, well that's awesome because I was watching you uh, while you were working on that Maryland dress and looks like you were doing a lot of draping there. And that's something that a lot of us want to really get into and get an opportunity to do um, and trying to take some, oh, that's so gorgeous, <laughs> and trying to take um, classes and things like that. And you're basically self-taught by these other media um, resources that we love so much and we hope never go away. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say about mm, probably 70 or more percent of the people that come on the show that are doing fantastic things in sewing are all self-taught. Um, it's I think it's the sort of person who's self-driven. Um, they're not afraid to go find things on YouTube, take a class here or there, do whatever to, yeah. to do this because it is a passion. So um, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I would have thought it would have been the other way around before we started the show, but um, it's definitely more people that are just self-driven following their their bliss, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like you could get a, um, like a hands on almost because you're um, watching YouTube. You can stop it at any moment you want and replay if you didn't catch something and watch them step by step. So it's really great to be able to do that. Yeah. It's, it's really good. I was talking to someone yesterday actually who doesn't sew, who is, I have a lot of people always say, oh, you're so clever. And I'm like, it's not really clever. I just found a thing I love. And when you find a thing you love, you keep trying to get better at it. That, that's how it works. So it's, it's, it's more a kind of interest and dedication and a passion thing, as you say. It's not, I think anyone who finds anything that they, they love tends to get good at it. It's just one of the things that happens. Um, and this is the thing I've chosen to sort of dedicate time to. So I'm now getting to the point where I feel like I'm, I mean, I'm, I still feel like I'm so far away from being good at this yet. But it's a, uh, um, oh, wow. nice well, isn't, don't you think some of a majority of us have a little of that in, in, in them still? Because I have, uh, uh, I hesitate to say this, but I have almost over 40 years of sewing experience myself. And I still feel like I'm a newbie sometimes. I'm still learning stuff all the time. So I think all of us have a little bit of that in them. Yeah, but I'm glad. I mean, I think I would feel very. I would feel sad if I thought if I woke up one morning and thought I'd done it all. <laughs> yeah. That would not that would not be a happy place to be. So no. yeah, <laughs> not at all. Okay. We really nicely into talking about your channel um, because that is one of those places on YouTube that you can find very interesting things to inspire you, to educate you. Um, I yeah, and it's like I said, it's it's not just inspiring and educational; it's entertaining which I quite like about your channel. Um, everything, fabric and seams, I always have problems with that word. <laughs> uh, applique, the Maryland dress. Um, yeah, and oh, this, don't even get me started on the wanted top. That was a fantastic video that you did. Um, and I literally bought it right after I saw you make it. Like, Good. I couldn't stop myself. Good. Even though it was all French instructions, I was like, yep, she, she there's enough in that video that I can make it. So oh, I'm sure yeah. everyone else oh, would be yeah. just as inspired. Oh, good, I'm good. Oh, good, I should get into it. Yeah. 
<laughs> good. I, kind of, I think one of my, um, I, I, it's an interesting thing starting to do YouTube. Um, and it, it was, I mostly did it because it terrified me. That was basically the reason. Um, and uh, I think that the thing that I learned very quickly was um, trying to be serious was not going to work for me. There are some people who can do a very good, very polished, very serious thing. I no, I am so boring. <laughs> I'd watch it back. I was like, well, I find myself boring, so no one else is going to want to watch this. And it was the moment that I started being a lot more relaxed and kind of um, goofing around a bit that it that it suddenly became a more alive thing. So I'm really glad that comes across because I enjoy doing it. Um, but it's it's you know you could, you can't ever watch your stuff dispassionately. It's really nice to get the feedback. So thank you. Uh, yeah. It's really nice. You've done a great job. Now, um, we got to ask, where do you find your inspirations for your projects and your work? Ah, oh, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, uh, I, it's changed a bit recently. So I, I think I used to, um, I used to just be out looking at stuff. And again, it's that thing. If you, if you love something, you go out and get into the kind of, you know, internet spiral of just endlessly kind of following links and finding yourself in the kind of, you know, maze of stuff that's out there. Um, and as I said, just a lot of the clothes just I really liked. Um, but I found that I was actually making a lot of things. And it was one of the, I had a little bit of a personal like conflict around that because I, I don't, volume is never something I've really aspired to have. Like I know lots of people really like just making a lot of things and I totally understand that. But one, I have no space anymore. <laughs> um, but also, you know, I didn't, I never used to buy clothes and I suddenly started making more than I ever shopped. And I was kind of, it didn't quite gel right. I was sort of a bit like, oh, I don't know, I would never have gone out and bought this much stuff. So it felt a little uncomfortable. So I changed. So I kind of made a conscious effort this year that I was going to make fewer things, but they would be bigger projects that still stretched and challenged me. Um, that I would find the inspiration from a dip from that place instead, which is where Marilyn came from. Um, and uh -huh. it was very much a if I wanted to make something that I knew was going to be difficult um, and kind of push me outside of my comfort zone, what would I do? And I came up. I don't know where the idea came from. Actually. I came up with this idea of like trying to recreate dresses like it started off as sort of iconic dresses but um there aren't actually that many iconic dresses that people would recognize out of context um mm -hmm. though you know i'm very happy to always have suggestions of new ones so if anyone's sitting there going well i can think of a hundred then please do say um, but uh, yeah so that was where that's where marilyn came from and the, the inspiration is um it varies a lot. I have a lot of ideas. I find that uh, I'm constantly coming up with things and having to start new projects. I have a real problem with having to get things out of my system. If I have an idea in my head that won't go away, I have to try and make it or it, or it just doesn't budge and it drives me crazy. So I do have lots of little things that kind of sit in the background and I try them out and I'm like, oh, that was a terrible idea. Why did I think that was good? <laughs> and other things. I'm like, oh no, this one's okay. Um, so it's a lot of trial and error. But I get a huge inspiration from the rest of the sewing community. I mean, I think as everyone does, but, but there are, mm -hmm. it, it's lovely seeing what other people are doing. And actually, the wanted top is one of the few things in the last few months that I've seen. I'm like, I need to, I just need to make that because I loved everything about it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, that was a good one. Well, and you're absolutely correct, too. Um, the majority of us are inspired by looking at social media and what other um, creative types like ourselves are actually doing. And I agree with you. It gets me into trouble all the time because I'm one of those people that you were just mentioning that, you know, I have this closet over here that's full. And if I don't go in there and do something soon, I'm going to have to take over another closet <laughs> in this room. So, uh, yeah, and I hardly ever do shopping either. So you're absolutely correct. You uh, find yourself um, getting changing as you go along. Um, what inspires you to keep on moving? So, um, Don, did you have something you look like you had a question for? Uh, no, I was um, just thinking, it, I really think it's cool how you, one, came to that realization, and two, how you solved the problem, like when you thought, oh my gosh, like I'm going down a path I don't want to be down, 
and then you decided to make less, but then make bigger projects. And um, even how you split up your videos into three, um, you know, like how you started it, the finished, but then in the middle, that fabulous, the second video on cleating, that was wow. so neat to see. And uh, yeah, all three of those videos, I was like, when's the next one coming out? Yeah. <laughs> but then again, you don't want 200 iconic dresses by the end of the year either. So I, I do like how you split it up and um, how you didn't just quit. Cause I think a lot of times people hit that and they're like, oh, this isn't working. I'm just going to stop. Yeah. So I, I think it's fabulous that you hit that and you went, okay, what would, you know, what works for me now? Yeah. yeah. Right. And when you change, um, Helen, when you change um, the way you did things, especially as far as your YouTube channel, um, did that change the amount of content that you actually placed in your YouTube? Did it uh, lower or did it change anything in that respect? Um, it changed. It, it changed quite a lot in terms of the way that I thought about what I was doing. My 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 channel was always a little bit of a um, well, it was a channel for me to be able to kind of you know just share a load of stuff and whatever I've been doing. And I actually I, one of the reasons I started it was because I wanted to commit to doing things and then make them in a certain amount of time. Um, because I found that I would have things I just wouldn't be making the time. I was I was pretty busy, and it was sort of there as a little bit of a personal forcing mechanism. Um, but yeah, it changed the Marilyn thing and, 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 and the other dresses that will be in that series, and there will be more. Um, I just knew it was going to be a lot of content just to go through the process anyway, because it took me like three months from actually coming up with the idea. Wow. I mean, not full time, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I work and stuff, but it was, it was a long process. And there were pauses in there, but I knew it was going to take me a while, and I knew that the, the process of developing the shape and how the dress was going to look was going to take a bit and I was like well I don't really just want to put the final version out there because that's not what life is like I want people to see that you try things and they don't always work and you have to improve things and it's it's a it's a you know kind of a repetitive iterative thing um so I kind of thought that was going to be three but I wasn't sure it could have been more than that um and yeah the pleaters I was just like I need to if I'm going to go and get this done I need to film it because it's I'm really geeky about stuff like that as well so I find those sorts of things I, I love seeing professionals do things incredibly well it's one of I just love it particularly crafts people um and that was that was super fun it was a good day uh but yeah it, it um so it did change things but um in a good way it was quite str it was quite challenging I had to kind of figure out how I was going to do it and I still you know it every time I try to put a video out I'm trying to change something and make it better don't always manage it but I'm <laughs> um, a lot of it's a bit experimental so it's there's loads of stuff I love doing that is not about dressmaking so the uh, the applique stuff is it applique I never know which way I say applique. I think the English pronunciation is applique um but it is it goes right back to my quilting roots and I love it because it's incredibly you can be very expressive through it in a way that you can with clothes but it's not quite the same um, and I can get to do a little bit of getting my sense of humor out in some of the stuff that I'm making, which I'm really liking. So, yeah, there's, it's nice to have a place you can just put that and kind of be like, hey, I've done this and see how people respond to it. And yeah, It's nice. It's good to get the feedback. Well, I know that you drink. We already discussed that. But I'm curious. We've asked other guests on the show this question. So I, <laughs> I really need to find out from you. I don't know why it just popped in my mind, but I have to ask you. PDF or print <laughs> patterns. <laughs> I I'm very impatient, and the <laughs> the um, the like the fast fashion bit of my personality that that, that could, like make, makes I means I create a lot of stuff also means that I see something I'm like I must have this immediately, like immediately. Um, <laughs> And so for that reason, I really love PDFs because it's like, bang, got it, in my hands. So that's <laughs> um, It's amazing. But the, the whole yeah. Yeah, cutting out, sticking together stuff, I just, bleh. But I've never yet gone to a coffee shop and taken a thing and made someone print it for me either because I'm just because I'm just like, ugh, I should just do this myself. I, like, I could pay someone, but it just feels like... But, um, yeah, I'm probably going to get to that point. I did just, I did just buy a new PDF pattern that I'm probably going to take and get printed just to see how that goes. But yeah, I do, yeah, I'm a, I do like PDFs. Me too. <laughs> I'm right there with you, so I understand. Well, um, which is your preference? Right? Which do you prefer to do more, draping 
or pattern? Um, well, I'm not a particularly uh, experienced draper. Like at that, the, I, I wouldn't really have a clue. I kind of the Marilyn thing was a little bit necessity rather than anything else. I just couldn't work out how I would draft it to make it work. And I'm a very new pattern drafter. I'm still learning hugely. Um, that's what that's the biggest crafty course I've done actually was the um, pattern drafting course in crafty, which I, which I thought was brilliant. Um, so I love pattern drafting, but that's that's again my geeky scientist overlapping venogram with my creativity like it's, it's bang on that and it just makes me happy kind of like i get to do geometry and get rulers out and then i get to make something <laughs> it's my happy place <laughs> okay. we have people in the side that mentioned that they loved your um coat video as well oh thanks oh yeah um I, I, pretty pull a picture of it up I love that picture of you too. Um, that, that picture that was taken of you in that Maryland dress that's on there, that's just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, that was my, my younger sister who is um, an incredibly instinctive and talented photographer. She's not a photographer by training at all, but get her behind the camera and somehow she always creates something magical. I think it's partly because she and I have a very good relationship, so it's it's easier to do like do that, which I would really, not normally do in front of the camera. <laughs> Um, well, I have a question about that photo. Um, we uh, you, obviously you had some kind of wind come up there, but how did you manage <laughs> to do that without a wardrobe malfunction? If you know what I mean. Oh, there were lots of wardrobe malfunctions. If you see, oh. <laughs> it was. I there was absolutely crack. There were some crackers. I um, I went around to my younger sister's house, and that looks like. This is one of the things I, I love and loathe about photography and why I have a love-hate relationship with Instagram is that you can create the impression that something was happening that wasn't. And that's really good in lots of ways and really quite dangerous in others. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, I am standing on a very small, like, child's stool. Uh -huh. Very high heels, I should add, so it was treacherous. Um, <laughs> my sister's partner is holding a, like, desk fan uh, on the floor <laughs> underneath me propped up on a like Disney animation themed cushion. Um, <laughs> it is the least camera setup you can imagine, but it works. So, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's totally a professional shot, even though it may have oh. not looked like that behind the scenes. That's too good, that's too funny. Much too funny. <laughs> love it. And I'm I sorry, I interrupted, I saw that picture and I just, Interrupt oh. the, coat, the coat that you were bringing up. So sorry about that. Oh, well, it's, it's worth mentioning. It's gorgeous. <laughs> but so is the coat. It is good that you soft and floaty. You don't want everyone who watches this, although I'm sure everyone knows who you are, yeah. but people who might not, to think that all you do is drape in big flowy gowns. I mean, yeah. applique, lots of other stuff. Yeah. And gorgeous, gorgeous coat. Yeah, that was probably yeah. the first. That was my first. Um, Actually, that may, now that you mentioned it, that's probably part of where the Marilyn thing came from. I decided that that coat was going to be a proper, I was going to do it properly. It was like, if I'm going to spend the time making a coat, and that fabric was pretty expensive. Um, so I was like, right, I need to actually do this properly and force myself to slow down and um, not rush things. Um, and I just loved that process. I loved it. The, I, I again, I think the geeky bit of me really likes the kind of the inner structure and the tailoring and like knowing what goes underneath. And I use loads of hand. I'm I'm a massive fan of hand sewing. I'm a big hand sewer. I'm getting back into it now. But I used a lot of hand sewing stuff on the inside. And yeah, but every time I wear that coat, I get comments. It's just it's one of those. I think the thing that people underestimate um, about about the way people dress nowadays is that things don't tend to fit very well because everything either has scratch in it or it just doesn't people have forgotten what good fit looks like and it's that coat fits me really well because i made it myself but i spent a lot of time getting the fit right and people always comment on how nice it is and I'm like it is a very nice coat it is an unusual shape but i think it's because the fit's so good and people just don't like you just don't see that if you start training your eye to look out for good well-fitting clothes on other people you see it relatively infrequently now um so i think i think part of it is that and just getting something that was clearly you know made to fit you and fits you properly makes a huge difference um and i'm not you know i'm not patient enough to do it with everything but with big projects i will spend time 
Yeah. I've made some things that do not fit me. Don't get me wrong. I <laughs> we all have. And that uh, reminds me of a, uh, something I saw in a commercial when I was sewing. I looked up at the TV and um, I don't know what was on, but this guy had on a plaid shirt. And it's just supposed to show you this is on TV. And he was standing sideways. And I happened to look at the seams of this plaid shirt. They were nowhere near matching at all. And this was on television, a commercial, and it wasn't a comedy commercial either. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, things just aren't made the way they used to, and they don't put the time into it for fit or anything anymore. Yeah. Um, but if people don't, like, I think if people don't want that because they're not, you know, they're buying the stuff that doesn't have the pattern matching and isn't fitting well, then, I, you know, it's all a little bit of a vicious cycle. But, um so it's not, I don't say it from a position of virtue. I say it just from an observation, which is that I think, you know, it's just changed a bit. But I think when you do wear things that fit you incredibly well, people notice. They might not know what they're noticing, but they notice it. Um, and it's, yeah. it's, uh, it makes a bit different. I think that's because they're so used to seeing clothes that are not fitting properly. They have yeah. one that fits properly. It looks so different. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. And um, we probably, Dawn, um, we're getting close to that 15 minute mark. I would like to hear, is there anything else you would like to tell us about the Maryland dress and your process? And uh, I noticed a couple of times you did mention that the coat and something else had inspired the Maryland dress. But um, when you started this and you got inspired and you had it in your head, um, what were the things that actually got it started or how did you get your process started to make the dress itself? Um, yeah, that's a, a, a good question. I Well, the, the nice thing about this tendency I have to have an idea in my head, and if it doesn't go away, I just have to start and see if it will work, um, is that, that that's sort of what happened with Marilyn. I kind of, I will spend quite a lot of time thinking about how I'm technically going to do something before I do it. I like the challenge of, okay, well, I know what this looks like, but how the heck would I like, go around making it? I have no idea. Um, and I knew the most challenging bit, the bit I was the most worried about was the upper bodice part, like the actual halter neck bit, because I could see in all of the photographs, well, one, I realized a load of stuff I couldn't, I didn't know about the dress, but it was pleated and had a particular fit and style. I was like, oh, I, have, I don't even know whether I could draft that. So I thought I would try draping it. And the first thing I did was to try and just drape that first bit. And in the in the first video, but also in the time lapse that I put up afterwards, which is just like three minutes of the whole process. So if you don't want to watch, you know, like 25 minutes, then you can get a sense of it. Um, what I, I kind of had to do a bit of trial and error. So I tried to, you know, I tried to drape it and then pleat it. And that wasn't working. So then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to pleat the fabric first and then drape the pleated fabric to get that to work. It was very trial and error. It was just that process. And I break it down into kind of conceptual chunks. So it's very much like, right, if I can get the halter neck bit right, then I kind of know how I'm going to do the, like this middle section. And then the, the, the skirt is obviously just a massive circle skirt, very heavily pleated. Um, and I had to do a lot of trial and error with pleating. And yes, eventually took it to the professional guys, which was the brilliant decision because there was no way I could have ever got it that good in her, at home, not having a steam box in my house. Um, and that was fabulous. I didn't even know that they had such a thing. Yeah. Wow. Um, there's, a, there's a company in the States that do it called International Pleating, who were amazing. I rang them. They were the first people I found, and they recreated the Marilyn dress for a Snickers commercial, um, maybe in the early 2000s. And I called them, and they gave me loads of helpful advice on how they'd gone about doing that and what pleating I needed to ask for. So if anyone ever needs professional pleating, and it's not expensive, I think it's about $10 to get a panel done or something. It's not crazy money. Wow. Um, and you only need a couple, like I needed two. So if you are wanting to make something which you need that level of pleating, I can really recommend it because it's not expensive and they're great. So yeah, if you're in the States rather than the UK, then I can recommend them. I mean, I've not obviously had anything pleated, but they were lovely, so. I... <laughs> That's awesome, thank you. That's really awesome. And I remember that Snickers commercial, that was really funny. <laughs> was very funny. Yeah, with Willem Dafoe, Willem De Willem De I think it was. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you see in your future, Helen? World domination? <laughs> oh yeah, obviously that's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am, well, I'm in the middle of working on the second recreations um, dress. So that one is, it's actually on the sofa behind me because I spent the day today trying to get the <laughs> energy. <laughs> trying to get um, some progress because that's another one that's been in my head for ages and I was like, I really need to start this. 
um, there's a there's an event in the UK in the middle of May called the Dressmakers Ball, where um, a load of um, two people have stuff. They're putting on a big kind of ball, um, but for dressmakers, so everyone makes their own gown, which is great. So it gives you a real excuse to make something flamboyant, which most of the time we don't really get the excuse to do. Um, so I'm trying to get it finished for that, uh, so I can wear it to that, which is um, going to be interesting. So I've got about two weeks, but you know, that is awesome. um, yeah. And then more, um, yeah, just more YouTube stuff. I'm really enjoying the hand sewing. There's likely to be more of that stuff. Um, and the the PK, the cactus pot that I did at the PK was a very quick thing. I'm kind of I like having those projects where I'm not at my studio where my sewing machine is so I can sew when I'm at home because obviously you need to be sewing all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think just more of that stuff. So, yeah, I saw that. you do some of the hand sewing on the straps of that Marilyn dress. Yeah. And I don't know why, but it made me want to sit down and start sewing on my hands too for some reason. But it just looks so delicate and so nice the way you did it. And was the a video that I watched, it was only a snippet of the shot with you doing it, but it was just so elegant the way you did it. So, Thank great you. job. I, I highly recommend it. Hand sewing is a wonderful pastime. It's a very, it's a very meditative, therapeutic, quiet, slowing down activity. So, whereas a machine can sometimes feel very like you're rushing, or you can, it's a really lovely way to just make yourself slow down and pause and kind of connect with something physically. So, I, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big advocate okay yeah well i um and you're right it does force you to slow down you have to because you can't rush and do that you'll have a couple of stuck fingers if you do <laughs> so now um dawn i noticed that um we had a few questions should we go to the questions that they've added down below and for those of you who are new here um tonight if you didn't notice there's a question and answer. If you scroll down, you'll see where you can actually post those questions uh, for Helen, and we'll get to them as we can. Did you want to take the first one? You want me to, Dawn? I will. Thank you. <laughs> We're so organized tonight, Myra. You're fake. <laughs> okay, so Helen, your yeah. facial expressions on your YouTube post are so much fun to see when they pop up in the sub feed. <laughs> It is good to see a person so animated. I love that way. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Andrea of So To Fit just saying, I think she loves your show cards for YouTube. And Thank you. Good. I try to, if I can make myself laugh, I'll put it up. That's generally my rule. I don't always have something funny, but normally I pull an utterly ridiculous expression at some point. So I'll try and grab it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have no shame. It's fine. I would much rather. <laughs> I don't do that whole like attractive photograph thing very often, other than potentially with the Marilyn dress. But yeah, most of mine is me looking stupid. So <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, we have another question here um, from Judith D. She said, "How is your sewing productivity efficacy since getting your new sewing studio?" Oh huh? yeah, good question. When I'm there, it's amazingly great. Getting there is tough, and I have missed being able to just get out of bed and go and sew in my dressing gown. Like that, that has been um, tougher. But when I, I force myself to go, I'm very productive. And it's amazing having a space where all of my stuff is out all the time. I have a very small flat. I'm sitting at the table that I usually would sew at when I was at home. And um, it just takes over the front room and I would have to clear up every time and it just gets so time consuming and annoying. So it's brilliant that I don't have to do that anymore. That is amazing. So yes, it's, it's, it's better. Oh, awesome. So I, it's actually away from your your place. It's, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's off-site. Okay. And is it not as warm as your house? I think I saw one of your photos where you yeah. there, there, there are a few hints in my videos that I'm wearing a massive coat all the time. <laughs> it's not a particularly glamorous space. It's, like, it's an old converted sort of out the back of a garage warehouse thing, but there's an there's no real heating, well, there's no insulation, and they have big blow heaters, but they're a bit inefficient. So in the winter, it's really cold. Um, okay. So yes, I'm normally in like a hat and scarf and coat, um, but you know, that's okay. <laughs> Anything from our sewing craft, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have the same thing in my sewing room. It's not really well insulated, and um, I guess we'd have typical weather here in Canada to the UK. And uh, 
yeah, even those like fingerless gloves sometimes. It had a couple of layers of jackets on and you sew it away. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it might get slightly colder in Canada than it does in London. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that problem here. Uh, mine was in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <Okay>. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Um, we've gotten through all of the questions already and let me see. I got one more question before we wrap up. I was looking at trying to look in the comment section to make sure we're not missing anyone on the sidebar. But where do you see yourself in five to ten years, Helen? Um, other than the world domination. Um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I would hope that I am in a position to be honestly making more money out of the sewing that I'm doing is probably um, where I'd really love to be and 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 molding it into more of my work life um, I want to I want to be I would still want to be sewing and I want to be making um, you know stuff that I love and inspires me um, but it would be great if I were also able to spread that um, and do it in a way that the only way I'm going to be able to put the time in is if it's also then paying me. So the money is not really the object, the time is the object, but it kind of has to come along with it for it to be economically even vaguely viable. Um, so uh, yeah, I would love I would love that. But you know, in the meantime, just doing more of the stuff that I really like, which feels like a complete luxury. So you know, I'm very lucky. Yes, and it just appears, you know, when you see the way the world is going, there are so many people um, that I've seen over the years that have decided to move away from uh, high paying corporation jobs and be more creative and be happy in that creativity um, and doing something that they have a passion for. So that question for me is always interesting to hear somebody answer because nine times out of 10, that's what's happening. They see themselves moving from a corporate job into something more creative. Um, based on their passion. So I understand that. I do understand. Okay, let's see. Do we have um, what time, how much time we have to watch our time so we can get up. We got a couple other things to get in. Do you have anything else that you want to ask her, Dawn? Um, no, I, well, I desperately want to ask her what the next thing she's making, big project recreation, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Surprise. How about, um, not rushing you or anything, but ballpark. When do you think you'll have it out? <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll have to be in May because the, I have to have it done for, so it'll be in the next month. It'll, it should be the next month. Um, and if you look back through my Instagram feed, I did put out a very early first draft, which a few people made some guesses on. Um, I'm not going to say whether they were right or not, but you can, you can, <laughs> if you're really that, you know, <laughs> wanting to work it out, there are clues. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to check that out, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we don't want to keep you too late this evening, um, as it is in the wee hours of the morning for you. And we do really appreciate that you came on the show knowing that you were going to be this tired. <laughs> yes, we do. It's okay. Really fun. <laughs> oh, thank you. We, we really appreciate you stopping in because um, you guys come in and you help us out by coming in and letting us interview you. So we appreciate any time that you can give us. We really do. Yeah, no, it was great. Thanks for asking me on. It's been really nice. Hopefully we'll get to get you back soon sometime, maybe even to talk about that ball gown. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go, you see. <laughs> <What's this thing>? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, that'll tie up our interview for the evening. So yes, if you want to rush off because you'd like to sleep sometime, <laughs> we'll hold it against you. Um, but Myra just gonna, and I are going to go over some uh, housekeeping stuff and, and a little announcement, and then we'll have our after party. So cool. thanks again, Helen, just in case you disappear in the middle and we don't get another opportunity. Like we said, we really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, you too. Cool. So Myra. You want to tell everyone what our big announcement is? <laughs> ah, we have a big event that is about to happen. And it is a wonderful, we think it's a wonderful event. And um, I'm going to say the name because I just so much love it. <laughs> and I'm going to go and give you a little tidbit about it on the technical end. It is called the Pennant. Sew It event, and it's going to be happening next month. 
So Don, you want to give them a little of the technical side about what that pennant saw it event means? Yes. So um, what we are doing is we're going to have a challenge in which you um, get your inspiration from Pinterest and you or Instagram and even though it's called the pin it <laughs> uh, from Pinterest or Instagram and then you uh, take that inspiration and you make a garment. Now um, I have a video on YouTube explaining a bit more but it doesn't need to be I see this gown and I'm going to recreate it perfectly but if it is you know we like recreations <laughs> so that's awesome but you could also do it like oh I really like the silhouette of that maybe with a different neckline and then you can have a pattern of that or you could just see a pocket on Pinterest and you're like oh my gosh why didn't I ever think of that before and then stick that pocket on what you're making now so we just want people to go to the pin it so it event on Facebook um, put their photos in there before May, between May 24th and May 31st. And then on June 6th, we'll show the photos of people's makes on that sewing blab. We'll also have some people on the show and we even have some prizes. <laughs> and that's really exciting because we're going to do a random drawing uh, of two lucky people to win. Each of them will get a $25 uh, gift card. So we would really like for everyone to join this event if they can. No pressure, but I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, Dawn and myself will actually participate, but we're obviously not going to be in the random drawing, but we're going to participate so we can help others along to see what the kind of inspirations we're looking for. So over you know, the next uh, couple of um, lab sessions, you'll see some of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it should be a lot of fun. And uh, much like the fabulous Judith of Judith D's World, and um, uh, thanked her in her video for her brilliant idea, in the video, sorry, um, she had a drawing and uh, she had three companies that you could get a gift certificate for so that it could be open to more places and not just Canada and the US. So I've followed the amazing Judith's lead and we have a very similar thing. So we'll have um, two people who win the gift certificates. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. Like it's not just, in my mind anyway, I, it's not just about, you know, this is what it looks like and I recreated it perfectly. Although, like I said, we love that too. It's more or less, I want to like seeing the journey. Like, you know, if somebody picked that, how did they get there? You know, like what's the, the similar thing? So I think it'll be very exciting. And I love that. If you're already doing another challenge, uh, for example, menswear, um, you can find a Pinterest inspiration on yes. online yeah. for menswear. You can find a neat pocket detailing. Like you don't have to do an entire pair of pants. <clears throat> and then the coolest thing ever. I, I really love the fold line. I don't know if everyone in the comments have heard of them. Um, uh, they have a kind of sewing community and pattern database. And they have an oh, fabulous YouTube channel. I, I love their videos, but they have a, a hashtag that you can use. Um, so if you decide you want to do the silhouette that you see on Pinterest, but you're like, oh, what pattern do I use? I don't like I don't know what to choose. You hash you send the photo. We'll hashtag it. Find my pattern uh, to the people of the fold line and they will suggest patterns for you. So, I mean, I've seen people do this in Facebook groups too. So there's lots of options. If you find something crazy and you're like, oh, I really want to do that, but what do I choose? You know, don't worry guys, there's something there for you. <laughs> true, definitely true. And I really do believe that this Pennant Soil event is going to be a lot of fun. And like Dawn mentioned, I don't know if everyone um, caught that, but like she mentioned, if you're already doing a challenge, which there's so many of them out there right now, um, don't look at this as another challenge. It's not what it's meant to be. It's an event. So if you're working on something, say an apron for this month, which is about to wrap up, you guys, um, you can actually have yours inspired by something on Pinterest or something else that was um, you saw on Instagram. And that's something that you can post over on the Pin It, Sew It Challenge. So you're already creating it. You can go ahead and add it. So, you know, it's just something to, it's almost in addition, not in addition, but it's um, 
what is the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Complimenting what you're already doing. So um, I, I really think it's gonna be a great time. And of course, who doesn't want a gift certificate? Yeah. $5, I could use more fabric. <laughs> I really could. <laughs> So um, now the event will be up at 8.30 this evening. Um, it's not up yet. It was scheduled for then. Sorry. Um, but the, uh, oh, sorry, the Facebook, uh, I mean, the YouTube channel is already up. So if you want to look at the video, although I think we pretty much covered it there. I just gave another example. But mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, like Mari said, I think it'll be a lot of fun. There's so many talented ladies in this group and who watch this show and gentlemen that I can't wait to see what, one, what they picked as their inspiration and yeah, where they take it. Yes, um, that's actually, that's a really great idea, Alethea. I just saw Alethea say in the comments that next month's the men challenge. So she's uh, gonna look out and see what she can find. And that's exactly what we intended for people to do with this challenge, um, with this event. Is if you're working on something already, why not, um, you're gonna get two ways because if you're in a challenge, if there's some type of drawing for that, you have two chances now to win something on the challenge and with us in our event. So yes, do as much as you can. Uh, yes, we definitely will be posting, Aletha, that in um, all of those groups. Um, Perry Crafter is so much talent. Um, wherever we can get people in, we will be posting it. And we would appreciate it. Normally we don't say share, share, share all the time, but we would appreciate it if you shared it out with people and got them to join the event. It's my first time running an event, so goodness, I hope it even, <laughs> uh, the Facebook event, I mean, I hope it works. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'd really appreciate it if you share it out so more people can be in the competition. It'll make it a lot more fun, I think. And yeah. And what do you think? Like what you think? say too that um, we didn't mention is, is this not something that we're going to be doing monthly. We're probably going to do it twice a year. So we'll have uh, probably a different event, you know, within another six months or so. So we're going to do two events a year. So we want to try to make this one as successful as we can. Um, and with one dress, it's an excess or one dress with one project, we think it's a success. So Whatever we get is going to be a success. So uh, we really want, and we want some people who are not shy to come on during that time and possibly model or discuss their piece that they created. So we would like some of those people who are not shy to get on camera to come in and talk about their pieces. Um, I think it's good that you mentioned about the so much talent menswear challenge um, and the apron challenge that's ending this this week. Yes. The tops that pop challenge is going on this week. Yes. And then the seamstress of YouTube um, have the flag, um, you know, like show your, your pride in your flag kind of challenge in which that will be, uh, I think that's up to probably July 4th. Okay. So some of them overlap, you know, but uh, it'll be good. And we can tell tell you, that's why my, if you hear all the beeping, someone's face, Facebook messaging me about the seamstress of YouTube one. <laughs> but we'll get to that again in the next uh, show. Okay. But for now, I think we're going to slide into the after party so that we don't take up too much of everyone's time. Okay. So yeah. for everyone watching on YouTube, uh, thank you very much. And we'll see you next week. And for everyone in Crowdcast, don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>
tons and tons of fun, but it also means that I'm throwing myself into different challenges and, and things as well. So I'm doing the apron challenge wow. and the top challenge, and I'm trying to get it all done and filmed and everything before us. Sunday. Wow. So I'm really excited to be doing the so much talent challenge. Olivia. Hey, Hi. Olivia. How are you? I don't <laughs> we haven't seen you enough. So I think we need to do this. Oh, this no, no. <laughs> yes. No, you don't have to do that. <laughs> oh my god. You look beautiful as ever. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. I have been busy. I'm tired, um, but I just wanted to show my face. But I want to know where my people are. Where's everybody at? Did they fall asleep or something? What is <laughs> going on? I think this is very exciting. This uh, pennant, sew it. I'm excited. Is anybody else excited? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I get to participate. I get to be in the drawing. So this means if nobody else participates, then guess what? I get. I get the cards. <laughs> Is yes. that what that means? Yeah, she gets $50 worth of gift cards. <laughs> yes, I'm excited. So I'm really excited because I do, I love Pinterest and um, I, there's a lot of inspiration there. So I'm, I'm glad this challenge is up so I can participate for one. And then, you know, I can see what's out there. The men's challenge is coming up. So I'm sure I can look for something different and unique that I can apply to, you know, the men's challenge. So. Thank you all for doing it. I think it's exciting. And I love the show card. That is too cute with the thread. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I worked on it all day yesterday and last night. So I'm a little tired, but it was so much fun. It was all done. <laughs> I that just want to know cool. where everybody is, though. It's like everybody ducked out. Is everybody, <laughs> are we well, having I, problems or what? <laughs> yeah, I saw Andrea there for a little while. I don't know if she's still here. Samina was there, um, but they may have all. I'm not sure if they've gotten off or. or nope, Andrea's still Andrea's here. There. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just there. But anyway, I am going, you know, I'm going to promote it. Um, just, you know, post it. Make sure you post it in, in uh, SMT and uh, the Peer Crafters. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever I'm on and we're talking, I'm definitely going to be speaking on it because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, yes, there are a lot of challenges out there, but I mean, everybody doesn't do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I might post a challenge, but everybody's not going to participate in mine. Uh, there are challenges on YouTube, all kinds of stuff going on, but everybody doesn't participate in all of the challenges. So there's something for everybody. And I think this is a great one. I think it's going to be interesting. So and I, I know I'm looking for it. So if you got one, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the reason why we didn't call it a challenge. I mean, we call it a challenge. People, they're already, they're already just, you know, submit a photo of that channel right. over here. We didn't right. clash with anyone. Um, so that's one of the re main reasons why we called it an event. Right, right. Okay, well, I'm coming to the event. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. All right, ladies. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. All right. Oh, goodness. So how about you, Myra? Um, what have you been Woo. It has been crazy busy over here in this household. Um, I've been working nonstop on tops. I actually have um, two. No, I have three cut out. One's almost done, and I have to do one. I want to finish these three tops before the end of the tops that pop, and I want to try and get an apron in there. That's when I mentioned to you on Facebook that you weren't alone, Dawn, because I haven't even cut my apron out yet. So I really have to um, get started on that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to join the men's. Well, you know, that's what's odd about this. And here we go with the cross challenges. One of the tops I'm making for um, right now that's cut out is for my husband. It's another one for my husband. So that should be for next month's challenge. <laughs> So I don't know how I'm going to work that one out because I want it for the tops that pop, but I also want it for the men's challenge too. So we'll see how that works out. But yeah, um, I've been busy cranking out sewing stuff and, um, you know, other things trying to get myself organized and get some type of um, structure back to my sewing life. So um, yeah, it's crazy busy over here too at this house. So that's what's been going on. Um, what is, we here have some questions here. 
Oh, Alethea hasn't cut her apron out either. Oh yeah, that's right. She has that jumpsuit that she was working on as well. Um, we got a question. Will you ever have a sewing retreat weekend? Uh, and if we did, where would we have that retreat? <laughs> I'm in Canada and you're in Florida. You know what? I'd make the sacrifice. I'd come to Florida. <laughs> I knew you were going to say I'd that. I'd come to warmer weather. <laughs> well, I have some news for Patricia. Um, one of the things that Alethea was working on this year was a sewing retreat, but it had to be pushed back because of, you know, other commitments. But that's something that she's actually working on towards, and she just said that for next year. So there is going to be a sewing retreat at some point soon. Hope that answers your question, Patricia. Um, and Anne uh, very kindly has reminded us um, that Andrea, Andrea has um, a pattern out. And yes, we heard earlier she was in the after party, was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago, talking about it? And I talked to her on Skype. And yes, she's been working so hard on this. And it, it, it's just fabulous. And if she doesn't want to come on now, maybe we could beg her to come on at another time to talk about her patterns because your internet didn't, oh, okay, uh, there's no problem. But uh, yes, uh, just know that everyone's, you know, very proud of you. All your hard work will pay off. She says she can't do the phone. I know, I hope you got your power back on. I saw when you were doing the scope um, that your power was out. It was so cute too because she had this guy working on her sewing machine, her um, Juki. It was, and um, he he was actually, because she had no power in her house, he was using a power drill, a cordless drill, to actually get the sewing machine to move. That was, that was so hilarious. I'd never seen anything like that. Oh, she said that uh, her service is back on, but um, got fried. The services got fried. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. Yeah, we have, I'm sorry. Sorry, I just noticed, and uh, I hope she didn't make this too long. But I hope she's still here too. Um, Kim said, hello, this is my first po postcast and I've enjoyed it and uh, that she'll be doing the challenge. Oh, so awesome. that's lovely. So Kim, thanks for watching and thank you for doing the challenge. Secretly, I was afraid it was going to be Myra and I doing it. <laughs> our, our event is our special event. <laughs> okay. Um, so are you going to try and come on, Andrea, on your phone or no? Because I yeah, think, no. You can't come on your phone yet. I think they said they were working on that. Okay. Yeah. I'll just okay. click here and see. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes, there are going to be four of us with Alethea. If nobody yeah. else. <laughs> that's a party? <laughs> oh, um, Andrea says she did it before. Oh. Well, if you can come on. Um, we'll, we'll try it. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you good to try it? Yep. She is? If, if we're taking too long, please feel free you all to drop off. We won't be offended if you do that. <laughs> but um, if you want to stay on and party with us, and please stay. Make sure you got your uh, beverage of choice. Yeah. Mine is water. Uh, so I'm I'm going to invite her on. Okay. And if, you know, if we're in a house court or something, you don't want to come on camera, just don't answer. <laughs> So let's see where. So the oh, apron challenge, oh. huh? I'm sorry. I scared her. <laughs> the apron challenge actually ends at the same time as the top challenge, I believe. They both end the same day. Um, I don't even have fabric for my apron. I'm going to have to, hmm. <gasps> Go shopping. <laughs> Something. Well, I have put my plan. I really waited for this apron. So I'm going to, um, I really wanted to make two. A fancy one for my hubby and one for, actually three. One for me to really cook in and one for me to cut his hair in. So um, the other two might not make the end of the challenge, but I at least want to get one. And it's probably going to be the one that I cook in. Uh, what was that? Uh, those 
that have industrial materials, do you have trouble getting home maintenance service? Well, Alethea is the one that I know that has an industrial machine. Her and um, Andrea have, and I'm sure there's probably others, but those are the two that come to mind. Maybe one of those ladies can uh, answer your question, Anne. Actually, um, Anne, Andrea actually did a periscope where there was a gentleman who made a house call to service her industrial juki, which was really awesome, she said. Um, maybe she can give you a referral on that, depending on where you are. And we're trying to get Andrea on right now, so maybe she'll be able to answer that question. Uh, no, it says incompatible for some reason, unless it all of a sudden straightens out, but it's got like big red letters, incompatible. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. I can't do happiness to service my industrial machines, except for they're in New Zealand. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I had to leave them there, uh, wait, room to ship them, different power supplies, there was just too many things. So I've just got a little home sewing machine now, and I miss, miss my industrials. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, I could not get her on, sorry. Oh, okay. So we're going to have to do it another time, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we don't want to take everyone's entire evening up. Um, goodness, <laughs> um, we'll probably get her on next time. Uh, yeah, so check out Pin It, Sew It, okay. uh, and page on. <laughs> if you search Pin It, Sew It, you'll find it event. And also, um, we'll put stuff on Perry Crafter, So Much Talent. That Sewing Labs page, all those places. So, okay. um, yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Myra, do you want to take us out for the evening? Sure. And actually, um, I think, Alethea, I did see that apron you were talking. I think you showed it on one of your periscope. It was the cutest little thing ever. Um, she made an apron one year uh, from kitchen hand towels and some oven mitts. It was the cutest little thing. I think she did, and I saw it was really nice. Okay, well, thank you everyone once again for joining us for what I felt and I think Dawn felt was a fabulous show. Um, we had an interesting guest, Helen Pudfoot of Stitch My Style. She um, really, um, I really truly enjoyed uh, talking with her. So until next time, sewing peeps and sewing enthusiasts, we wish you adieu and have a great night. Night, everyone.